So I'm Joachim Sauter. I'm a media artist, media designer, and I founded a studio uh, here in Berlin 25 years ago. It's called Art Plus Com. Uh, we are designers, artists, scientists, programmers, technicians, and we're doing mainly interactive installations or media-based installations in this interdisciplinary field between art, design, and digital technologies. Dear Ted, please start the clock. Yes. Okay. So I got another 30 seconds. Uh, it's, it's like in a, in a cab, if the cab driver is not starting the, the thing, so, okay. Good, okay. So, uh, and I want to talk today about uh, how we came from the intangible, from the immaterial, to the tangible. So, as uh, media artists, we are mainly working with uh, monitors, projections, and LED screens. So, this is what we did the first 15 to 20 years in our studio. I have to say, probably you have seen it, we are already 25 years old, so we started in 88, so we have our, I have a silver wedding with my, with my studio. Um, okay, first 15, 20 years, mainly screens, so we did a lot of uh, interactive screen-based work, then projections, uh, a lot of projection work, first multi-touch, tables, uh, interactive costume projections for, for stage design, and also um, uh, LED screen-based facades. So over this, or after this 15, 20 years, uh, we ask ourselves what might be an alternative to this immaterial, uh, intangible output interfaces. And we then started to work with physical and tangible interactive installations. So we worked with metal, with mirrors, with wood, and any kind of uh, physical material, but choreographed them and designed them with all the qualities of the computational and digital uh, work. So the very first project we did in this was a kind of uh, mixture between the uh, virtual and the physical, and it's a installation which we did 2006 in Tokyo. Uh, it is a public art commission in, a, on a, in the center of Tokyo. And we decided to uh, install the installation on a public sidewalk coming from a subway station going to uh, the buildings. And there's also an artificial pond. So the idea was to create something which is dealing with light waves and water waves with immateriality and materiality. So you see the topic here already. So we installed a four by four meter LED floor and by walking over people, they created ripples, virtual ripples, which became real ripples when they hit the waterfront. So there is this kind of dialogue between, already between the virtual and the physical. And uh, this is something which we really figured out that people, they, they see the poetry of the physical motion. So they, there is a kind of attachment to, to physical motion, which I, as a, as a media artist, uh, had, hadn't been aware of to that time. So here you see, and uh, probably you see it better here or here, so the physical waves created by actuators. So the first purely physical work was a commission in the commission in uh, which we opened in 2008 uh, for the new BMW museum in Munich and uh, it was a nice commission they said okay do something do make an installation dealing with the design of a car so we came up with the idea of having a floating surface in space which performs the creation and the development in car design Unfortunately, there are no flying carpets out there, so we had to come up with some ideas how to create a floating surface in space. Made a lot of experiments with uh, meshes, and at the end we ended up with spheres on ropes. This is the first rendering. And then, I said, okay, the rendering look, looks quite nice, but we learned about the idea of the poetry of physical motion. And physical motion, you can't simulate. So, we had to come up with a test setup, so we had 25 spheres and choreographed them. So spheres 
on ropes hanging on motors, and they were driven by a choreography. And immediately we figured out again, the beauty of physical motion is something completely different than the beauty of immaterial motion, which we know from TV or from, from the computer screen. And we learned a lot how to, uh, how to tell a story with this kind of, uh, of, of tangible output interface. So the whole choreography is a 12-minute is a uh, storyline showing the design process of four iconic cars of the BMW uh, history. So at the very beginning, as you have seen, there is no idea how the car will look like. Then the first abstract form appears, which already points towards probably a certain type of car. Then competing forms are appearing, destroying the whole situation, coming to a new one. And at the end, uh, you have the car. So this is a, probably a little bit of sound. Only a little bit. So this is a compi compilation, uh, I think two minutes, show, giving you a little bit of impression how, how the whole thing works, although it's very difficult to present the physical thing on a virtual screen, even if it's a, as beautiful as this one. So. So if you do new things, you always have to take risk. And if you take risk, you very often make mistakes. This is a mistake I don't want to make uh, for a second time. Three weeks before the opening, we had a bug in the software. So there was one loop of the choreography, and then there had been a flip of signs. So minus became plus. So the motors, they get instructions to let the uh, spheres going down, for instance, from minus 70 centimeters or minus 60 centimeters. In that case, because the signs flipped, we had a plus. The problem with plus is that it's loud, loud, loud. The plus is the wall. So, so the whole installation crashed and we had been six people, no one was talking, no one was scream screaming, we had been so shocked. But fortunately then, uh, three weeks later, we had the, a nice opening and it's still running since five years. Um, so it became quite viral in the, in, in the internet and so we had a lot of copycats out there, uh, especially in China. And <laughs> so this was the opening of the, uh, of the uh, Expo 2010 Shanghai. There was a very ugly pea stuff trying to, to fly, 
was really young. So usually we don't copy ourselves, but uh, we then got a very nice uh, commission in the Asian uh, territory, so we uh, agreed with this. It's for the Changi Airport in Singapore, opened last year. And there we had uh, the same thing, but with uh, copper drops, two installations in a dialogue um, uh, in the entrance hall. So this is a setup, test setup when we started working there. So two things in a dialogue, and they already shot a nice uh, a promo video. If you go to, if you go to Singapore, stop by in Terminal One. Uh, usually, I got a lot of emails about ah, beautiful. I nearly missed my flight, and so there was no one missing the flight up to now. Okay, um, 2010, uh, we got a very nice commission from a prosthesis producer, a guy who is doing prosthesis make an installation for the uh, pavilion of the disabled in the Expo 2010 uh, in Shanghai. And we had been totally aware about the fact that the Expo will be full of LED screens, full of projections, a real kind of retina massage. So we said, okay, we do something very quiet, very poetic for this uh, pavilion of the disabled. Came up with the idea of this old communication technology where you had a mirror in the hand reflecting the sunlight to communicate over long distances. So we asked the producers, uh, the, the, the prosthesis producer, to give us hundreds of his prosthesis, painted them white, added a mirror to it, uh, attached a motor on every of the prosthesis from, from behind, added a very strong light source which reflects that kind of. Um, uh, the mirror reflects that light on the other side and created a computational choreography for that which always ends up with a Chinese sign for handling and movement. So this is set up, a test set up here in, 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 in that case it was in Stuttgart. So you see these hundreds of prosthesis rotating, reflecting the light from the other side or onto the other side. And you see the, the interface by itself contains the information as... Uh okay, then set up in, in Shanghai. This is how it looked like. And... Yes, that's then the Shanghai, so... We are not responsible for the flowers here, so it's on the right thing. Yeah. Okay, and this is the hundred. Uh, this is a, a, a selection of out of 
the first 100 search results about Expo 2010 Shanghai, and I think it was the right decision to go for more this kind of poetic, to stand out without being loud. Okay. Uh, so coming to the last project, I see my meter is going down. Um, uh, that's a commission from Deutsche Bank. They commissioned us to make installations out of their logo, and it was totally obvi obvious that we not translate or, or, or extrude the logo into the space. So we said, okay, we want to have a kind of anamorphic transformation of the logo. And we also divided the uh, diagonal beam in 48 triangles. And so this is from the so-called sweet spot. You can read it, and this is, you can read it too, but not as, as good as from the sweet spot. Uh, we had different kind of ways to choreograph this. Uh, so this, the, the vertical movements, then a kind of light play, shadow play on the floor, and the most complicated things, and now we are coming back where we are coming from, was to project on, an, on, on this moving kinds of tri triangle in a, in a kind of video mapping. This is how it looks like. I have to say there are no renderings. The, the, the monitor is too sharp. They, they're real. It's real here. And music up. So you see the kind of shadow play created by this triangle. Now the most complicated thing is, had been to project onto the triangles in an anamorphic way. And as you can see, the graphics is behaving as, they, as, as if we have gravity on them. So, and then we changed perspective again. So, coming from the pure immaterial, going to the dynamic physical, we then started to go into encoding of surfaces. So, the computational process was not into, uh, put into the choreography of something, but into the shaping of the surface and using the movement of the onlookers as a kind of animation. Sounds very abstract, but you see it's quite easy. So for the entrance area, we made a polygonal mirror, and uh, we had a blue light on the other side, or we have a blue light on the other side. And if you're in the right position, the blue light forms then the logo. So it's not any kind of motors driving something, but it's you personally by walking onto. This is how the installation looks like. So it's the scattered mirror. You have the blue light on the other side. So you see the blue light, magic, you go up, and you see this defragmented thing. You can't read it. It's not legible. But as closer you come, as clearer it gets. So and it works, works from, from all perspectives. In the meantime, we did several of these projects. Unfortunately, I have five seconds left. So I, no, come on. It's not fair. <laughs> um, so, actually, as mentioned before, what I want to say was um, having these 25 years of, of working together with these fantastic people in the studio means that you are, have to reinvent you all the time. If you don't reinvent yourself, you more or less are stuck. Okay, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>